so happy we alive. Hey, good evening, and welcome to Louisville. Uh, this evening we're in uh, beautiful Maui, Hawaii, again, and uh, we're privileged to have with us Jim Kimmel. And Jim was uh, earlier uh, uh, sharing with us some experiences you had in prison. Is, it, is that right? You you were saying uh, that it actually it was a positive experience for you in some ways. Yeah, it was a very positive experience in, in many ways actually because I got a unique uh, view of Caesar's cesspool, so to speak, from the inside where he, you can't really get that view unless you spend some time there. It's like a whole different view from the belly of the beast, so to speak. But uh, what I discovered while I was there was that just about everything that was going on outside of the fence was also going on inside of the fence. There was, uh, it was the first time in my life I'd ever really uh, hung out with a group of people who were into heroin, for example. There was a whole bunch of guys that were just strung out on heroin and they, every day they had their heroin and they had their own small group of people that uh, hung together. And there was other folks that smoked pot, and there was other folks that took other drugs, and it was all going on inside a prison. That was kind of really? a that was kind of a revelation to me. Where did the prisoners get money to finance that? Uh, oh, a lot of them had yeah. money from. That's fine. A lot of them had money uh, from their. A lot of them were wealthy prisoners, actually. Uh, what's his name, Jerry? Uh, Oh God, I forget his last name now. He was one of the owners of uh, Paramount Pictures. <laughs> Jerry Zucker. Oh, Jerry, yeah? Z Z Jerry Zucker was one of my friends that I met in prison. Uh, and he had millions of dollars. <laughs> so, What was he in prison for? Uh, income tax or something like that. Something about oh, okay. taxes, as I recall. But uh -huh. uh, a lot of people had, were there with money. There were a lot of smugglers there. Uh, uh, a lot of people that were making their money through drugs one way or another, some of them were importing them or, or whatever, so. Uh, so anyway, you don't feel like that they uh, necessarily did without whatever they were doing? Well, I, I, when they, when they uh, took me to, to Terminal Island, I had to spend a week or so in the uh, ANO, Administration and Orientation, or Admitting and Orientation, and they decided that I should go to the drug dorm. <laughs> what, I, what I found in the drug dorm was that all everybody that was there was enjoying whatever drugs that they were into inside the drug dorm. You could get whatever you wanted. Uh, uh, pot was, uh, you could buy little nickel and dime bags of pot, or you could buy heroin if you wanted that. You could buy uh, Delatas if you wanted Delatas, or uh, whatever. It was, a <laughs> it was quite a surprise. But the whole thing is, uh, it was a good experience, mainly from a spiritual point, because the uh, the people in there, of course, just like the people out here, had never heard of the Urantia book, and uh -huh. that was one of my main things: is turning people onto the book and having groups of people read together. And so uh, we had um, several different reading groups uh, reading the Urantia book. Uh, I've had people tell me they were happy that they got busted and had to go to prison because the value of discovering the Urantia book was more than worth the time that they were there for. And what's the, what's the association between the Arantia book and cannabis? Well, at base level, of course, free will choice. We're all sons and daughters of God, and God has bestowed every one of us with the prerogative, with free will, and the power to choose. So, in spite of the laws against this and against that, everything at base level is a matter of choice. And the laws really take away the freedom of the person to choose to govern his or her own existence, and uh, so the, 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 just the, the understanding that everything in life is a matter of choice, and that we wouldn't have the power to choose if God hadn't given it to us. Not only that, the source of pot <laughs> is the is the source of free will, the source of personality. So all the things that we have on this planet is a gift from God and it's all about a matter of choice at base level whether we use this or use that or not. Uh, so, uh, 
the laws that say you can't do this and you can't do that abrogate man's freedom to choose and then taxes him for not using his power to choose. Like you take all the people in America or anywhere in the world who do not smoke pot. It's not because the law is against it, it's because they choose not to. And everybody that wants to smoke pot, they, they smoke pot because they choose to, regardless of the fact that there's a law against it that says you can't do this and you can't do that. So it's a big joke, in my opinion. It's a matter of uh, criminal enterprise, uh, of what do you call uh, taxation. It's a tax scam, basically, that helps the cops and the prosecutors and the judges get their welfare check. Without all the drug, without the taxes, against this and against that, they don't get their paycheck. So as I see it, the drug laws contribute to high class welfare. And the ones that are picking up the welfare checks is the judges and the prosecutors and the cops. It's a racket. Do you, no, do you, no. do you see any hope for, for change? Or? <laughs> yeah, I, I do indeed, because they can't do it forever. As more and more people have become aware um, of the truth and, and free from all the uh, bullshit. And that's the main thing. The, just discovering the truth and knowing the truth sets you free of a lot of things, including fear and, and uh, misconceptions and so forth and so on. So. All right. <laughs> Any, anything else you want to share with us that just comes to mind? Well, the most important thing I can think of that the whole world needs most to know is that men are the sons and daughters of God, and by faith, they can actually realize and daily experience this ennobling truth. And to realize that we all are different versions of the same thing uh, is a matter of fact, and, and to recognize it and to realize the truth about it um, brings happiness. So I see that happiness is kind of an indecisible part of discovering truth. The more truth you discover, the happier you get. <laughs> so you're pretty happy, are very you? Happy. You're you're very happy. You're very happy. <laughs> <laughs> you seem very happy to me too. Yeah, really? <laughs> and I don't, uh, I don't quite understand where your paranoia is. Uh, you don't have it. It's, just, it's, it's just a matter of choice. If you choose to think the wrong thoughts, you can scare yourself blind. You just scare the shit out of yourself by thinking, "Oh God, if I do this, I might get busted." Well, you might not too. It's just a matter of, you know, it's about learning to overcome the quality of of negative thinking. I mean, still, your 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 history, as you've told it, is one of continual harassment by the uh, <laughs> by the government and the yeah. police and the, that's where the frontiers of reality and the judicial system. Yeah, that's that's because the, the citizen discovers the things way before the system catches up. In other words, the the the, 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 the citizen, the individual citizen, can far transcend. Uh, the consequences of the group's uh, negative attitudes that have uh, accumulated in society over time. And uh, there's been a lot of lies taught to the people, a lot of Santa Claus stories. Stories. Well, well, what's an example of one a of Santa the, Claus one story? One of the best examples of a major Santa Claus story is the fact that there are no uh, records uh, in existence that has to do with the value of medical marijuana, for example. Um, I've got copies of information from the archives, the U.S. archives, that proves the U.S. government was uh, completely out of touch with reality on the subject of pot back in the 20s from hearings in front of Senator Volstead. They tried to make marijuana illegal. And uh, the testimony that was uh, put before Congress came from the, the directors of all the pharmaceutical companies in the major medical industry. They did not want marijuana to be made illegal because of its great medical value. So the government's story that there's no records in existence on the, on the subject of medical marijuana is a lie because the, the, the papers we discovered in the archives had been sealed for over 50 years. And then they were finally opened up and I've got copies of all these papers that prove the medical value of pot as given in congressional testimony.